سبيل الدموع سبيل مريح تنا أدا يا صاحي كي تستريح وبث الدعاء الخفي الصريح يسعك الفضاء الرحيم الفسيح رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأخطة من لساني يفقه قولي I'm glad that we have some new members here, mashallah. And for the new brothers, I will give a brief introduction about what we have done in the last two weeks. In the first week, which is the first part of this whole presentation on this topic, was about this universe where we live in. What is, where are we living in? What is this earth all about? And what is the universe comprising of the earth in comparison to our lives and our personalities. And why did Allah create such a big universe? What was the need for him to do that? And then the question to be asked when we see the universe is why? Why did he create that? Then in the second part, we had the tour of the heavens. As we know, this universe is the last heaven this earth where we live in and the space which belongs to this earth is the last heaven. Then we started with the first heaven, second heaven and the last seven, the heaven number seven. So we understood that the first heaven compared to the second heaven is the size of the ring. So imagine the vastness, the sizes which is so huge compared to where we live in. And then like that, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, up to seventh, the seventh heaven is the last heaven, which is the size of the ring compared to the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we are thinking, what we are seeing, what we imagine is mind-boggling. We need to visualize and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more. And we can do that only when we understand these sizes. We can't measure these sizes, but we can at least imagine them with the purpose of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. And then the question comes is, we have seen the universe, we heard about the sizes of the heavens, and then what? Then is our job. Then we are here for what? Why did Allah create all that along with us? And he says that he has written our rizq for us in this world, like we call in business term the budget. You know, we have every year a budget. We plan a budget every year, how much to spend and how much to earn and how much to save for the next year. Accordingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this life and with this life he has given a budget. That in this world, when you are born, until you die, you will have so much of money, so much of relationships, so much of friendships, so much of health, wealth, and everything. Whatever is required for you to live in this world for that period of time. Then the question comes, if he has already given us, why are we bo bo so bothered about it? Why are we running behind the same thing to earn more? Can we earn more than what he has already allocated to us? The answer is no. Can we earn less? Also answer is no. Then why are we, no, why are we not satisfied? That's the question to be asked. So in this presentation, now we will go through the business model which will help us not only to earn in this world, but earn and secure our akhirah. Down the line you will see, we need to change the way we think in this world. Because the dynamics, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created with the universal natural system is different than the dynamics what we talk about on daily life. When we talk about budget, we limit it to, the, to one year. But the dynamics of budget, the risk, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given is so vast and so big that it never ends provided we earn it in the way he told us to earn. Because whatever we earn in this world 
is not earning, he is giving out of his mercy. So what we have to earn is for our next life, where we are going to be transformed from this body to another body and the soul is going to be there. So we need to think about feeding the soul first, then feed the body. But what we do in this world is, we feed our body, feed our body and feed our body. Never even think of feeding the soul. How do we feed the soul? Is the question to be asked. So let us go through and see how to feed the soul and how to earn the Akhira. Because that is the life which will give us the positions and the titles and the convenience and the luxuries based on what we earn today and what we earn here in this world, in this life. If we don't earn, we will not have a luxurious life there. We will have a troublesome life, maybe we will have a difficult life, which is never ending life. So we need to think about that life in here now. To begin with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah and let every soul consider what he has sent forth for tomorrow. And fear Allah, indeed Allah is all aware of what you do. If you see in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying twice, fear me. Why? Why should we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then in the first sentence he is saying, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and let every soul consider what it has to send forward for its next life. He is not saying you earn, you see what you are earning here. He is saying you have to see and monitor and have a record of what you are sending forward for your next life. Brothers, we need to think about this. It is a very important aspect of our life. You know, our life does not end here. It is only a transition period from here to there. But the point is, this is the only life we have got to earn that life which never ends. And then again he says, fear me. And Allah is all aware of what you do. If you see on this slide, this is the concept of the CMCG, stands for continuous monitoring for continuous growth. That's the logo, which you will see on all the slides. Because we need to be brainwashed to ourselves thinking that we are being watched, we are being recorded, we are being noted everything, whatever we are doing, we are talking, thinking, feeling, walking, sleeping, is being recorded. Why? Because Allah loves us so much. He doesn't want us to go wrong. He wants us to succeed in this life. The only reason why He gave us this life is to succeed. And it is the nature of human beings to be successful because we were born pure. We were never born impure. The purpose of our lives is to succeed and to obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to obey and follow the commandments. And the another thing what you see in this slide, in this slide is invest, strive and reap. In this world, invest here, now, strive today because we have to struggle in this world to earn the Akhira. We cannot have a luxurious life and still earn the Akhira. It's not possible because you have to work. When you work, you exert. When you exert, you earn. And when you earn, you send forward. When you send forward, that's what only will come with you in the Akhira. When we leave this body in this world, we transform to the next life, that's the only thing what we are going to carry. So we need to have a record, we need to know what we are sending. I'll tell you a very, uh, very brief story. It's not a story, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. One day I, ca I called my mother and I said, Ami, aaj maine ghar banaya hai. Oh, she was very happy. She said, where did you make it? I said, in Jannah. She said, what? 
in Jannah you made a house? How? I said it was very easy. I heard that if you pray 12 rakat sunnat, imagine sunnat, not well. If you pray 12 rakat sunnat in this world per day, Allah will guarantee you a house in Jannah. Now I don't understand when we are making a house in this world, we are so happy, we do housewarming ceremony, we do invite hundreds of people and we don't even tell ourselves when we make a house in Jannah that I made a house today and I don't feel proud. I mean this is the irony of our lives because we are living in a culture where we don't think anything about the Akhirah. We think everything about this world which is where Allah has given us free. Let us change that little bit. You know, let us make our minds to think in the right direction. The right direction is the Akhirah. But that comes with the practice. We need to practice. We need to talk about Allah. We need to talk about Akhirah every day, every, in every meeting, wherever we meet. We meet our wife, our children, our friends. Talk about them. Make the Akhirah so common so that we can see with our eyes here where we are going to go next. That should be the way we live in this world. And that's when we are successful, inshallah. I believe this slide is clear. We have to invest here. We have to strive here to reap there. But when we do invest and strive here, it doesn't mean that we will struggle here and we will have pain in a real pain manner. Because that has Allah has already guaranteed us here. We will succeed this world also. But the success of the next world is in our hand. We need to understand this. It's in our hand, not in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in a way as per his will. But whatever we do, we get it. What we don't do, we don't get it. We need to understand this very clearly. Like for example, if you are sending back home the money, to any of your relatives, they will get only what you send from here, right? You don't get anything extra or, you do, or they don't get anything less. And if you miss one month, they'll call you. Hello? Or when you go home back after 11 months, you are welcome. If you don't send, you're not welcome. Correct? These are the reality fact of this life. Imagine what should be the other way around in the Akhirah. So we need to talk about the Akhirah in our daily lives, inshallah. Now the question is how to reap? If we can reap by feeding our soul. And feeding our soul comes with opening an account of sawab jariya Now what is the account of sawab jariya We have discussed about this in the past a little bit. A recurring profit from your current account is sawab jariya Now what is your current account? Your current account is where you serve others, you help others, you learn to live together and you walk on the right path with faith, with full faith. And we also discussed last week that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has worked for 13 years on only one thing which is Tawheed, which is faith. And he worked 10 years on rest of the things. So if you take the whole account of 100, for one point he worked for 13 years, for 99 points he worked for 10 years. Now look at ourselves, where do we stand? Did we do the same thing or we forgot that one of 13 years and we are working only towards 10 years of his life and that's why we are failing. Because if you are perfect on that one point, this 99 points will become very easy to follow. They will be just followed without even being noticed. And that's what the rest of the world wants to see in us. The rest of the world doesn't hate Islam. They are afraid of Muslims, not Islam. Anybody who read about Islam, they follow Islam. When anybody but looks at Muslims, 
they are scared. There are many stories, many incidents we have heard about it. Why? Because they want to see in us Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that they can't find. That is our irony. That is our problem. How can you find Muhammad in us if you don't work on Tawheed? That is where we need to work on, inshallah. And sawab jariya, we need to deposit our hasanat. You know, hasanat is the currency of Akhira. Not dollar, not dinar, not rupiah. It is hasanat. And where we need to deposit? Deposit in the bank of Akhira. You know, we need to talk this language on day-to-day -day basis. How much did you deposit today? I should ask my son at the end of the day in the Isha time. Did you make your house today? You know, imagine when you talk about this, when you, then you start working on it. No, Baba, I could not do it today. Sorry, I'll do it tomorrow. Please do it. Because you can't go back in this life. You have got only one life, one time. You miss Fajr, you can't go back into Fajr. You miss Zohar, you can't go back into Zohar. That's the beauty. And that's where it brings the discipline in life. Islam is the only religion which shows you 100% discipline. 100% discipline, if you follow. <clears throat> but, you know, Sawa Bejaria, we all do it. Individually. But think about it, if we do it collectively, what will happen? What difference will it make? Don't you think it will make a difference? If you do it collectively? Because when we do it collectively, there's a lot of barakah in it. And Islam is all about doing things collectively, not individually. That's the beauty of it. So, when we do anything collectively, Allah guarantees the success. Imagine, where is success in this world? Success is in Salah. Right? The Mawazan calls us every day, five times saying, come to success, come to success. We don't even hear, we don't even understand many times that he is calling for success. Where is the success there? Because our dynamics are different again. We understand life differently. We need to understand the way Allah governs this world. And we need to understand the governance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. And then it becomes very easy to understand the call of Azah, of the Muslim, inshallah. The concept of this presentation in this meeting today is the upliftment of Ummah. Help the poor and needy collectively. Why? Again, because there is success in that when they do it collectively. For example, if I alone want to help somebody, we'll do it in a very small way and we'll be able to do it only for one or two people or maybe five, six, not more. But if we do it collectively, we can do it for many people. And the beauty of this concept is that we will do everything in a universal, natural, Islamic way. You know, when I talk about universal, natural system, I, I do not use the word Islamic with non-Muslims. Because they get afraid. They immediately go into the shell and say, oh, this guy is talking something different. He is not my nature guy. He is not my class. So I tell them, this is universal natural system. And if you really see, Islam is, is, is a religion. But it's not a religion. It's a complete way of life. We heard this many times. Many scholars have said this. That Islam is a way of life. From the time you get up from the bed until you go back into the bed, there is a system. There is a procedure. There are steps. There is a methodology to follow. If you don't follow, you fall down. So we are here to do business the Sunnah way. And that's the only way which is successful. I would like to remind you 
we spoke about it in the last presentation also but since we have some new members here mashallah you know muhammad sallallahu before he became a prophet what was he he was a businessman he was a trader and he was such a trader that people who do not like him also gave him a title of sadiq lamin subhanallah and because of that title when he was declared as prophet people accepted saying what if muhammad is saying this he must be right that he is a prophet we will accept now imagine what did allah do with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam during his non prophet time he developed his character he developed his personality he developed his communication skills he developed his dealings with people he created new business models the barter system the trading system the whole business methodology was developed by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and accepted by the people and based on that role what he played as a businessman he was accepted as as a prophet very easily so we need to understand how to follow that and when we follow the way of sunna that business will continue until the yawm akhira even if we die somebody will come and take it over that's how we need to create the business platforms where people will come and take it over and it should continue till the day of judgment and it is possible and that's possible only when you do in the business the business the sunna way if you do it my way your way we will fail because there's no authenticity in my way and your way nobody can put a seal and say yes this is right because it is not tested what is tested and certified as successful is the sunna way inshallah <clears throat> so the concept provides self employment opportunity to yourself the poor and needy brothers and sisters across relations and society whatever we do we should do with the concept of bringing our own brothers and sisters first and then look into the society across near you and then bring up we can be investors and be employed always now and after retirement you know how good it will be if we are if we don't retire only we don't have to retire now we we retire because we are working for somebody or we are working for ourselves only individually but if you work collectively you will never retire you don't have to retire because you are continuously required you have a share in the company you continue to work for your company and be happy because you are earning for akhira develop a base for acquiring islamic knowledge and spread our halal resources wherever possible in the possible reach in the region first we start with the place where we are then you spread around everywhere else once the concept is successful replicate the model in in other parts of gcc and rest of the world the row is rest of the world it is possible is anybody having a doubt that it is difficult it is not possible to do business the sunna way many people think if you are doing a business we have to lie cheat bribe these are common what do you call benefits of of business but no it's not required i can guarantee that i can guarantee that because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said it not me we need to believe in that and work towards like that and then also do dawa influence other members of humanity they are also part of umma ummat muhammadiyah you know this concept of understanding the umma is is a wide concept we need to understand this very clearly there are differences of opinions who umma is but there is one opinion that every person living in this world in this time is an ummati 
because he he is born after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anybody is born after him is an ummati because they all belong to him. On the day of judgment, we are going to stand in behind him. You know how the day of judgment going to be? That is also a beautiful scene. We need to understand how it is going to happen. We don't have time for that today, but that is a beautiful scene. I know where I am going to stand. And you should know where you are going to stand also on the day of judgment. When you will be called, what will happen, what are the events on that day? Because these are reality, these are facts of life. We take it very easily, we don't even talk about these things. But these are definitely going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to eat tonight or not, but that is definitely going to happen. So we need to know that. So like anything we do, we are judged on based on our niya. So we should also have a niya to do and what to do. To help others, poor and needy, and educate them in a true way and fulfill the purpose of our life. And the purpose of fulfilling the life comes only by understanding of Quran. There is no other way we can understand what our purpose of our life is if we don't understand the Quran. And when you understand Quran, you will understand Tawheed. When you understand Tawheed, it will be very easy for us to do the business the Sunnah way. So these are chain reactions, one after the other. And if you don't do the first two, you can't do the third one. And be able to feed the, hum, the Ummah by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the, the, the responsibility of feeding anybody in this world is Allah's. But He uses us or don't use us to feed. It is good if He uses us, if we are used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to feed His makhluk. We need to think about it. If I was, I'll give an example, if our stomach is empty, what do you think first? Eat. Right? And if, you're, 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 if you have not eaten for morning, afternoon and evening, can you sleep? And if you are hungry for one day, two days, three days, there are people who are hungry for months in this world. And if you go and tell them Tawheed and Sunnah, they'll give you one slap and say, get out. I am hungry for one month, you are coming and talking to me about Allah and Rasul. You first feed me, then you talk to me. Correct? We can never think. We have to first feed. So we need to become a source of inspiration and help them in feeding their own body and soul for the generations to come. You know, whenever we do something, we have to think of the generation behind us. Our forefathers always used to think and say, talk about these things. Hamare Dada and Nana and all, they used to say, you know, you need to think about your nasal because they are going to be your Sawabajariya or Azabajariya. Like Sawabajariya, there is Azabajariya also. But do we think about it? Imagine, agar hamari Yolad Sawabajariya ke bajaya agar Azabajariya ho, so kya hoga? It's very dangerous. So be selfish. I say be selfish for hereafter and you will be selfless here. You know, last week we were talking about the dynamics of terminologies in English and in this world what we use. When I say somebody I am selfish, he thinks this is a bad man. But if I say I am selfish for my akhira, then you think, yeah, no, no, he is right. So we need to be selfish for our akhira. If you are not selfish for your individual akhira, you can never serve people. You can never be selfless in this world. You know, I, I, I fear, every time I hear the names of the, some of the big old uh, charity organization heads, like for example, Mother Teresa, People talk about her so much. Mahatma Gandhi. They were all excellent people. We can't find one fault in them. 
they have served humanity like nobody else have served. But we can't praise them, right? For one simple reason. They were not obedient to Allah. They were living the life they want, not the way Allah wants. That's the only difference. Creating profitable business. When you think like this, you will be able to create profitable business. Provide employment to yourself and poor and needy. Always, you have to do first for yourself. Because if you don't do for yourself, you can't do for others. You know, we always hear that many people say, no, 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 don't think of yourself. Think of others first. How can you think? You will be weak. You will not be strong. So we need to think of ourselves at the same time think of others. So what's next? Are we, do we agree until here what we heard, what we discussed, what we spoke about? Is it right or anybody has any doubts? We need to understand this very clearly, as clear as the day. Because this, concept, sorry, this concept of being selfish for Akhira, um, I tend to agree, but uh, you know, at Jama Kayama, we have been told and we have heard that parents will be away, they will try to run away from the children. So, in that scenario, it's okay that there will be sort of selfish attitude. But living here, can we say that we should be selfish? Selfish for your Akhira. See, this is, the, this is the terminology used to understand how to build your character. Yeah? When you're talking about Akhira, what do you do? You help others. You share with others. You try to live together. You show people right path. You never show a wrong path. So what you do is all good. And what is that? That is selfless. Then you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about others. So it's a terminology used to make people understand the dynamics of this world and the Akhira. You know, there are a lot of other terminologies. Like last time we heard about humanity, being human, human rights. What is this? Okay, they are terminologies. It makes you understand something. But if you change that to a little bit, like humanity, you change it to humanity. Then what do you think about? Ummah. Whose Ummah? Which Ummah? You think of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So a whole character comes down to your mind that this is what an Ummah is because the leader of this Ummah is so and so. When you talk about human rights, we talk about human rights. But when you talk about Ummah rights, you talk about the rights and the rules and regulations laid down by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And like being human, okay, being human is a nice word. But what do you mean being human? We are human already. How more you want to be human? You can't have four, well, uh, four legs to become a better human. Or you can't have four hands to become a better human. But you say being Ummah. See how beautiful it is. You want to be an Ummah? You copy Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you be an Ummah. Anybody. This is not only for Muslims. Even a Christian, Jews, non-Muslims, anybody who wants to be an Ummah, you, you copy Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are Ummah. That's the beauty of terminology and also the irony of it. When we use wrong, wrong terminology, we don't understand anything. Till now we have been talking about humanity, humanity, humanity. Where is humanity? And we have been talking about human rights. Where are the human rights? You talk about it, yes, you take a whip and talk about it. But talk about Ummah rights. Think about how beautiful it is, how easy it is, how systematic it is, how disciplined it is. Everything comes in that character when you talk about Ummah. So we need to think differently, to live differently, because we are believers. We have to live differently. We can't be a rat in the rat race. We don't want to be in the race, which is called rat race. Because anybody in the rat race is still a rat. We need to be a different race. The race in which 
Abu Bakr Siddiq Ta'ala and Hazrat Umar used to be. They used to reach, race each other to do good. They used to race each other to help others. They used to reach each other, each other to please Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's, that's what we need to adopt. So, now is the real thing what to do, how to act, what we heard, we need to implement. If we don't implement, there is no use. You just sit and hear and go back. Fayda kya hai? I have defined the whole thing into five points. Basically, the first step is to do these five points. Number one, form a small team of like-minded people of people with business uh, understanding, a people of business experience, a people in the managerial categories, people who understand how to do business, how to manage the business and how to run it profitably. And then propagate and educate the people around you. Then expand the team. Then form organization structure. We need to have a structure. Without structure, we can't do anything. Because with structure comes the roles and responsibilities of everybody. And then we need to invite the Sharia board. Because Sharia board is going to monitor and regulate all the business activities. And that will help us to be on the right path. And this is what every bank does. Every Islamic bank has a Sharia board. No Islamic bank can function without Sharia board. And then we need to have rules and regulations within this organization. When you, after forming the organization, the rules will be every member shall complete the Understand Quran course. Level 1, at least level 1. The Understand Quran course is designed uh, by Dr. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahim, who is also a professor. And he's a rockologist. He, he has spent all his life breaking his head with rocks. And he designed the course for Quran, the easiest way to learn and understand. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a very easy course. We did it also in the Discover Islam a couple of uh, years back. Yes. It has been now inducted in a lot of universities and schools, even in Pakistan, mashallah, I heard there are 2,000 schools where this course has been inducted. There's a huge organization working on this. So all of us should do that level course, at least level one. And then start reading Quran with understanding every day, without fail, no excuse. You can forget to sleep, you can forget to eat, you can forget to go to office. But don't forget to read Quran. It should be done every day with discipline, with respect, with love, with affection, with fear that we shouldn't upset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then shall attend the leadership excellence course. There is one leadership excellence course which I'm going to organize very soon in here also inshallah. This is done by Sheikh Yawar Beg. He is the one of a kind in the world. He is a management consultant a business guru and a uh, family business consultant and at the same time he is an Islamic scholar. You will never find a personality like him. He organized this, this course throughout the world and I did one course in Oman uh, in 2013. Excellent course. I'll tell you the benefits of this course. This course is but for five days. For five days you will be logged in. You cannot go home, you cannot go out, but you have to dedicate yourself for five days. And I bet you, inshallah, anybody who has attended this course, they have got two benefits. Number one, the connection with Allah has increased. This is what we want. The most important thing in this life is to increase your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the first presentation, I asked you, how well do you know Allah? Yeah? Or how well Allah knows you? We need to evaluate this. Like if I say, I know the king of Bahrain. Everybody knows the king of Bahrain. 
but does he know you? That matters, isn't it? Think about it. Everybody knows Allah. Who doesn't know Allah? Tell me. Every human being knows Allah. But the question is, does Allah know you? Then, so that course, let, let's uh, be a little bit more on, on that course. This course will increase your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then how to live life the sunnah way. These are the two important things he teaches you, physically teaches you. And you will form into that frame of mind how to behave every day. And the course starts in the morning 3.30. The course starts 3.30 in the morning with tahajjud. And it ends after Isha. Of course you will be given breakfast, tea and coffee, then lunch and dinner and everything. And I tell you, you will never feel bored or tired. I have attended this twice. And that was my best thing I have ever done to myself. It is not cheap. When I say it is not cheap, he doesn't charge us anything for this course. He does it free. But where we do this course, you need to pay to stay there for yourself. Because you can't come home, it has to be done in a star hotel where you can live comfortably, where you can stay comfortably and you can concentrate properly. Focus is what is required. So, inshallah, uh, we will be organizing this course maybe in December or January depending upon the requirements and everybody is here and we'll see that, we will announce and then try to attend that. It will be a lifetime investment you will never regret, inshallah. Then offer investment opportunity to the affordable and like-minded ummati. You know, it shouldn't be that, no, 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 I don't want to bring any more shareholders into this. I Only I want to be in there. Bring in more people. Offer only one share each so that all are treated equal. You know, these are the key salient features of this company to form or this investment to form, whatever you want to call it. To begin with, each share could be defined after consultation. It could depend upon the, the size of the group, the nature of the group. You can, you know, you can suggest yourself whether each group should have, each, each share should be 1,000 dinar or 100 dinar, 10 dinar, 20 dinars, whatever it is. And then you see what happens. Imagine 5,000 into 50, that is 250,000 into 10 is and then into 50 is half a million dinar. If you have just 5,000 each year, and then you have 50 people, imagine the strength you will have. And many of us can afford that amount, that type of money. And we are just keeping it somewhere which is not being used anywhere. If you use it in a proper manner, in the right way, with the right niya, with the right intention, it will yield lot of asanats. Each investor shall support his own relatives first and then other poor and needy people in the neighborhood and the society at large. At least 10% other ummah shall be encouraged to invest too in every venture. Because you know, you, you cannot live in isolation. You are in this world where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given around us a lot of other people who don't believe in Allah. You need to bring them together. Sharia based investment policy shall deal with Islamic banks only. All ventures shall be Sharia compliant. Whatever business you do, it has to be Sharia compliant. You will see a list of Sharia compliant businesses and, and products uh, in the next slides. Plus Dawa. You know, Dawa is a basic requirement of every Ummati to do. Profitability. Only 50% of the shareholders profit should go to the shareholders, rest of the money should go to back into the investments. You don't need all the money. You need some money, but not all the money. <coughs> Very strict on business without riba. Absolute no riba. Nor give, nor take. Because that is one of the biggest sin taken 
absolutely lightly in, in today's world. We don't even think, we don't even feel a pinch when we are dealing in riba. It's very dangerous. Focus on industry demand. You know, when, whenever you're doing any business, just don't do because you saw somebody doing it. Don't do because you think you can do it. Look at the demand. Demand and supply has to be always matched. If that's not there, then you will fail, no matter how good you are in, in selling or uh, making a product. CSR is the corporate social responsibility, fulfill the community responsibilities. This was first introduced by Mohammed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it came into this world in the 19th century. Look at that. It took 19 years. But who brought it? Not Muslims. The terminology came here by non-Muslims because they read about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than us. Yeah, is corporate social responsibility. It's a terminology used in, in corporate. What they do is they, they do, they, they part some of their profits to do some good things in the society. They build a park or a hospital or a clinic or something and they say we are doing this for society. And this was first introduced by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allocate roles and responsibilities for each shareholder. You know, in this company, when you form this company, every individual shareholder should have a role to play. A defined role to play so that he is responsible about his being a partner there. If that is not there, then it doesn't work. It's not like you just buy a share on the public limited company and you say, I'm a shareholder in this company. And you don't know what's happening there. You have no control over it. That's not allowed in Islam. Whatever you do, you should be involved in it. It's better for you. Each investor should take operational roles and his own experience because all of us have some sort of experience. Use that experience. Serve the company. Serve your own people. Train them in your own fields. Be part of the ventures. Follow law of the country, universal natural system and continuously monitoring continuous growth concept. These three things are very important when you are working in a group. Otherwise, you'll have misunderstandings, you'll have waswasas, you'll have everything else in there, which is not good. And that comes when you're following all these three requirements. Remember, pleasing Allah is pleasing all, not the other way around. Yeah? If you want to please all, you need to please one. Right? Now, the whole concept what I have described you is to launch a private equity firm. I'm sure you all understand the terminology. I have used the, the terminology so that we understand. We, we, we know what we are doing, right? A private equity scheme is an individual's personal investments managed by professionals who provides financial backing and makes investments in the private equity of startup or operating companies through a variety of loosely affiliated investment strategies including leveraged, buyout, venture capital and growth capital. You know, in simple terms, you must have seen in good olden days, back home, the ladies have a scheme called chit funds, right? They, they contribute every month and one of the members take, the, take all the money. And they use for their own help, for their own household requirements or something. They don't invest anywhere else. Similarly, we do the same thing in a more professional manner, but to develop a business so that others can be employed. And we can be part of that employment scheme. This is all about feeding others and feeding yourself. Not when you retire, you become useless. You don't know what to do. Here is something to do. When you be part of this scheme, when you be part of this venture, you are related. You, you don't have to retire. You can work with your leisure. We can work with your capacity in whatever way you want. And there are two benefits in that. One, you will not be expensive to the company. The company gets a best experienced hand for a very minimal cost. So the cost of operating of that company becomes very healthy. 
your profitability goes up, you can compete into the markets with a better price. Private equity is capital that is not noted on a public exchange. You know, there are two types of investment, private investments and public and limited investments, where you buy shares of the public limited companies which are listed in the stock exchange. These are not listed on the stock exchange. Private equity is composed of personal funds and investors that directly invest in private companies or that engage in buyouts of public companies, resulting in the delisting of public limited. Once you are strong enough and you have enough amount, you can even buy the public limited companies and get them delisted from the public exchange and make it a private company. That's the beauty of these private equity and venture capital companies. You're getting it. And that's a far step for us, but that's the benefit of these companies. A private equity fund is a collective investment scheme used for making investments in various equity and to a lesser extent debt security according to one of the investment strategies associated with private equities. In the conventional banking, private equities are used to relieve some debts to buy things on mortgages or anything else. But in Islamic banking, you do only tangible business. There is no exchange of currencies. It's not allowed. A private equity firm sometimes known as a private equity fund is a pool of money looking into invest in or to buy companies. So because we are new, we can create companies, start a company. Or if you have so much of fund, then buy a company and start managing it. The whole concept here is not to invest in a company where you can't control, where you can't be part of it. You buy it, you own it, you work for it, and manage it. So it is backward integration and forward integration into your own ventures. In Islam, money is not a commodity and cannot be traded for profits. I hope we know all, everybody knows this. It is just a medium of exchange and it stores value. Money therefore must be invested in projects and ventures for the generation of activities, for the benefit of mankind and in the process you may profit and that profit is halal because you are dealing in tangible business. You must have seen even here when you buy a car what happens from an Islamic bank and what happens when you buy from a commercial bank? The commercial bank gives you money. And they say you can buy it. Any car you want. But the Islamic bank doesn't give you the money. They say you show the car, we will buy for you. And then we will sell you. So there is a trading in between two parties. And that is what is halal. That's one of the basic differences in Islamic banking and the non-Islamic banking. This is precisely why Islamic finance praises and encourages the application of a finance in the financing of real economic activities, which is trading and manufacturing. The returns should be earned by active involvement and participation in the business, risks of investments and not the returns on the lending or financing. That's what I've been telling. We de design this organization in a way where you invest, you work, you manage, you operate, and you earn profits. So you are striving from A to Z you are fulfilling the requirements of Allah SWT in doing that. There are different terminologies. You know, uh, Mudaraba, one of the terminology used in Islamic banking, where it's profit sharing. Mudaraba is one of the typical forms of Islamic private equity and venture capital firms. It is basically a contract between two parties to finance a business venture. The parties are a rubble mall, investor who solely prof provides the capital and Mudareb is an entrepreneur who solely manages the project. Both of them have a role. They are clearly defined and they clearly do it as per their roles. One gives the money, the other runs the business. This is similar to a conventional private equity and venture capital firms where there are where there exists a relationship between the capital provider and the entrepreneur. 
if the venture is profitable the profit will be distributed based on a pre agreed ratio in a commercial banking it is agreed at a particular percentage in the event of a business loss it should be borne solely by the capital provider to the extent of the capital contribution while the entrepreneur will lose his time and effort both will lose something but not all here which means the bank the entrepreneur doesn't have to pay to the bank the money and the bank will not charge the entrepreneur the money what they lost unless it is proven that the the loss was because of the negligence of the entrepreneur the key to a mudarba structure is the fact that the entrepreneur cannot be placed at the risk to bear losses unless proven negligent Musharaka is another form of uh, investments. Musharaka is a partnership between two parties or more to finance a business venture, whereby all parties contribute capital either in the form of cash or in kind. This will suit our requirements a bit more than the other one. Profits are shared at a pre-agreed ratio, while in the event of a loss, the loss shall be shared on the basis of capital contribution. There's another form is called wakala. Wakala is basically a contract where a party authorizes the other party or parties to act on his behalf based on the agreed terms and conditions. You know, these are all on the internet. These are the same exact definitions of these terminologies. I'm not writing these. I'm not defining these. These are the exact terminology which we will follow in this organization when we form it. Pursuant to the Wakala contract, it confers the power of rights, power and rights to the agent to act on behalf of the principal as long as the principal is alive. Look at, I mean, in Islamic way, everything is defined with specific time. Time plays an important role in Islam. There are two fundamental requirements for the establishment of an Islamic PNP uh, venture capital fund, namely the appointment of a Sharia advisory board. You know, in every business, the Sharia way of business, you have to have a Sharia board who will govern and who will inspect, who will audit the product. And the core activities of the investee companies must be Sharia compliant. Effectively, this means that the underlying assets and investments of the fund must be permissible. You cannot do any and every business in Islam. Like for example, you can't have a factory of cigarettes. So, but some people think smoking is okay. It's haram, <laughs> it's not allowed. Non-permitted Sharia activities include financial services based on interest. Gaming, gambling, conventional insurance, manufacture or sale of non-halal products, entertainment activities that are non-permissible according to Sharia, manufacture of sale of tobacco-based products or related products, stock broking or share trading in Sharia, non-compliant securities and hotels and resorts with non-Sharia compliant activities. Even that is not allowed. Now here I have made a small simple A, a figure, a diagram to show what is private equity in Islamic form structures and how should be a private equity Islamic structure. Where you have the firm, then you have PE funds and the Sharia board, where there are the fund owners, and then you have investments and management operation. This is where I've been talking, say that we will play the role of investments and management, operations and technology, research and development, and the Sharia compliance policies with CSR policies. In each of those companies you form, you will be part of it. Is that clear? Does it interest you? Yeah. Then we are the owners of ourselves. We don't have to depend on anybody. We can manage our own business. At the same time, improve the cash flow, circulate the wealth, employ the people, and feed the people in the halal manner. 
So or doing all that, we need to implement. And there are some implementation points. Form management structure, identify the project. A constitution shall be laid down which will govern the organization with the above set rules. <coughs> Select the eligible and fulfill the criteria of poor and needy so that no favors of partiality creeps in. We need to be careful about that. Create auditable accounts and dedicate roles in each investors. Establish the firm, collect the funds. Establish a long-term manufacturing plant. You know, we can start doing trading, but it's trading. Everybody is doing that. We need to do something which lasts long, which where people can come and join after us, and it will continue forever. Prepare the business plan. Feasibility study should be done. Appoint a consultant. And all this should be done from the group itself because you have people from every walk of life. You don't need to go out anywhere. You can find a, find a consultant, you can find a doctor, you can find an engineer, you can find a lawyer, you can find technicians, electricians, contractors, civil engineers. We have everybody. Make them part of the organization. Work out equity issues with the joint ventures. If you are doing a manufacturing, you need to import the technology. You need to import the technology partners. We can do that. Set time scale, be date rational. Whatever we do, we should define the dates. From 1 to 10 days, do this. 11th day to 20th day, do this. And be punctual, be disciplined. And then we, need to, then we can execute them. Implement and operate Islamic way of earnings. Issue roles and responsibilities for each. Define KPIs. KPIs are key performance indices. Establish training programs. Succession planning, where who will replace you? You know, it shouldn't be that everything comes with a surprise. Because in a, in a professional organization, nothing should be a surprise. Everything should be planned. Everything should be tuned in a way that it flows very smoothly. ISR comes with CSR policies. ISR is Islamic social responsibilities. Come with corporate social responsibilities. Look at the beauty of Islam. Always think big. You know, if you know who we are, we cannot think small. We know who we are. We are Khalifatullah. Then how can we think small? We have to think big. You know, we need, we have huge responsibilities. Identify industry demand. There are a lot of, I've just listed few, few industry names which can be looked into. Islamic banking, PE firms, PE is polyethylene firms because this part of the world is full with petrochemical industries. Education, education has to be, when you think about education, think big. I will, I will circulate SBA style. SBA is Standard Bearers Academy, which was designed by Sheikh Yawar again, who, uh, which is a beautiful model of the school to, done, to be done. The kaful is there, multimedia is there. You know, we, we Muslims, we fear to go into multimedia thinking it is haram. It's not haram. Multimedia, it depends upon what you do with the multimedia. There are a lot of Islamic activities which can be done. We need to propagate that. We are very weak in marketing, in propagation, in media. And that's why we are not known anywhere. We are known the way they want us to know. Manufacturing, service industry, space tourism. I love this. I want to go to Mars, I want to go to Jupiter, wherever I can go. Because I want to glorify Allah more. I want to see what more beautiful Allah has done. Because He said He did for us. So don't you think that we should know what He did for us? Isn't it? Then start feeding soul. Dawa and the concept, focus on Tawheed. Tawheed and Tawheed. I always emphasize Tawheed first. Because if you are not good in Tawheed, rest is not easy. Enroll like-minded investors. Investments. Establish a company, identify the industry, identify a joint venture and technology partner, invite the Islamic banks, start enrolling needy people, start execution, commissioning, 
start serving. Be date rational for each task. For all these things, we need to fix dates. Otherwise, things will never end. And always think Ummah, Ummah and Ummah. Because that's what were the last words of our Prophet also. He was worried, he was thinking about Ummah, he was praying about Ummah and that's what we should also do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. Alhamdulillah, we have come to the conclusion of it.